Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. But I can't do the collective part until I know what part am I called to be. What am I called to do? Now, why am I going over this? Well, let's go back to Romans 15. Paul has just made a case. We went over last week how Paul, writing to the church at Rome. Now, would Rome be a place with a lot of Jews or a lot of non-Jews? A lot of Gentiles, right? Non-Jewish people there. And so we saw last week, I pointed out that Paul was a master of the, of the Old Testament scriptures. We call it Old Testament. It was the Hebrew Jewish scriptures, the only scriptures they had. The New, Tes New Testament hadn't been written yet. This letter Paul's writing right here, he's including verses from the Old Testament. And he just went over this masterful, I, I, I call this a masterful way of pointing out from the Jewish writings that the Gentiles are indeed included in the plan of salvation. Wasn't that neat how you know, last week we went over this in, in verses uh, 9 to, to 12, and we saw, we saw how Paul said that the Gentiles were included in the whole plan of God. They were part of God's plan. He would, he would call the Gentiles to himself and receive praise from the Gentiles. He, he quoted that from Samuel. And then he went and, and told how in Deuteronomy, a book of Moses, that Moses even re recognized that the Gentiles would rejoice with his people. The Gentiles would be included in this plan. And then he used the psalm, the, the beautiful poetic psalm, Psalm 117 it was. He said, let all the peoples, all the peoples praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. We were included. And lastly, we ended with, with the verse he quoted from Isaiah. He said, thus there shall come from the root of Jesse, and he who arises will rule over who? Over the Gentiles. And in him shall the Gentiles hope. And then we read verse 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy, with all peace in believing, so that you would abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Gentiles were included in God's plan from the beginning. Now verse 14 begins a new paragraph. A paragraph where the tension is going to go from this beautiful truth that, that God has included us to something about Paul himself personally. He says, Now concerning you, my brethren, I myself am convinced that, that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, and able to admonish one another. Now, as you could, admonishment means to, to like, instruct in a, in a not, not um, what we call destructive criticism, but constructive, right? To really help someone to, to do good. He says, I know you can do this. He says, and I've written to you, verse 15, but I've written to you very boldly on some points, so as to remind you again, because of the grace that was given to me to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles, ministering as a priest the gospel of God, so that my offering of the Gentiles may be come acceptable and it might be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in Christ Jesus, he says, I have found reason for boasting in things pertaining to God. For I will not presume to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me, resulting in the obedience of the Gentiles by word and deed, in the power of the signs and wonders, in the power of the Spirit, so that from Jerusalem round about to Ill Ill Illyricum, it says, and I, he says, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ, and thus I aspired to preach the gospel, not where Christ was already named, so that that I would not build on another man's foundation, but as it is written, they who had no news shall see him, and they who have not heard shall understand. 
Another quote from Isaiah 52. He says, those that didn't get to have the news, they're going to get it. But we actually see Paul's aspiration. Here's his, look at verse 20. He said, I aspire to preach the gospel, not where Christ was already named, but where? Where he's not named. So I'm not, I'm not trying to be one of the preachers that comes in and builds on someone else's work. I'm going to go where no one else has gone. I think he's a, a pioneer for the guy who wrote Star Trek. Go where no man has gone before her. You know, explore new worlds and visit new civilizations. This, this is Paul. He's like, I'm going to be the, the preacher, the, the minister to the people. What God says was included, those Gentiles are included. Now, is this popular for a Jewish person? Uh, when I say Jewish person, I mean a Jewish rabbi, a Pharisee of Pharisees, to say, I mean, he was in the highest sect of their re religion. And he's saying, God called me to be a minister, which just means what? Slave. Servant. He called me to be a servant to those Gentiles. And, and he says, and so, he says, as calling me as a minister of the Gentiles, he says, I, I, I did what he told me. And he says, I'm not even, I'm not going to presume to speak about anything else except what Christ has accomplished through me. Now, what did Christ accomplish through him? It's interesting. He wrote this. He says, Christ accomplished through me, verse 18. Well, he, he accomplished the obedience of the Gentiles by word and deed in powers of signs and wonders, in the power of the Spirit, from Jerusalem all the way up. The other crumb is up. If you go up today, we would say all the way up to where modern-day Germany is, just at the, the south end edge of Germany. I mean, all the way over, and it will stretch over toward the, 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 along the, the sea there, and then down, it'll actually reach, Paul, Paul's going to reach all the way over to Italy. Okay? But at this point, he's only gone up to here. If you follow his journeys, this is, you know, he, he's writing probably this sometime after the, the second journey where he went all the way up into that region. Those, the, the area where, well, those of you familiar with the book of Revelation, you remember the seven letters to the seven churches? The, that area, that region, he brought the gospel all the way up to, he's saying, I'm not going to boast about anything except what Christ did. You know what Christ did? Christ let his power of his spirit, his signs, his wonders go with me to preach to the Gentiles. And man, the word spread. I mean, you, you study church history. Boom, when the word got out in, in that region, it just, it, it just exploded. And Paul said, um, that's all I can boast about, what Christ had done through him. And his it basically like the seal, the stamp of approval for his ministry was the fruit. You know, prove to me you're really called to do this. Well, just look at the fruit. You know, look at the souls that have come to, look at the power of God that has been displayed in these people's lives. You remember, Mike, he was up there, there was that, there was that one gal following him around. Um, Acts, I think it's 16 when, the seller of the, uh, the, the gal was going, uh, she, was, she was bringing profit to her masters by, by fortune telling. And she started following Paul going, this guy is a bondservant of the Most High God. Listen to him. He's preaching the way of salvation. Now, after a couple of days of this, Paul gets really annoyed. It says that she had an evil spirit. And it only says the word she says. It doesn't say the, the tone or anything. I bet she was probably like, ha! He's preaching the way of salvation. Can you believe it? Finally, Paul gets so mad. He's like, be gone, you evil spirit. You know, he casts this, the demon out. And, and the woman gets saved. And the word spreads. And the church is planted. And Paul's just like, you know, all I can do for to show that I'm really called to do what i called to do is say, look at the fruit. Look what God, look what God did by his power. 
Because Paul knew it wasn't him that made the demon leave. It was God. His power that made that demon go away and his word that began to spread. And so Paul is saying, listen, as a, as a result of, of me just doing what God called me to do, here's the fruit. I mean, people, you know, it's a, it's a blessed thing when you get to do something what God's called you to do because I know in our culture we have such an instant gratification button. I mean, we want everything right away. We want a diet pill that drops 40 pounds by tomorrow. You know, only fat, no muscle. It's got to be targeted too. We only want this area and this area, you know. Can leave a little in the cheek, but not, you know, not this cheek. Oh, well, <laughs> you know how this is like. Our society has everything we want so quick. And the, the problem is, is that we don't really have any patience developed. I saw on Facebook last night a little post saying, do you think we should teach children how to grow their own food? It was a question. You know, they had kids around a little planter box showing them how to do the lettuce and the vegetables and stuff. Do you think we should teach them how to grow food in the, in the school curriculum? I grew up on a farm, okay? I think everybody should learn how to grow food. I mean, I don't know why, but I just think it's something that you should know where it comes from. Besides that, I think that it helps develop something in you that for some reason, you know, our society really lacks because the kids think, you know, a whole head of lettuce just popped up in the grocery store overnight. <laughs> and they don't know how long it takes to grow in the garden and how you have to keep the slugs away and how you got to keep it clean, you know, and how you got you, you to gotta keep any other critters from coming in. and just, They don't know the effort that goes into making that grocery just appear. And uh, uh, milk. Anyone know what this means? Has anyone done this? The handshake of a farmer. Yeah, you, you, you only know what I'm doing right here if you've done this, okay? And if you've done it until your forearms are, are just like fatigued because you've had to milk goats and cows and, you know, people look at me, what are you doing? Don't worry. Everyone that's done this knows exactly what, what am I doing? Huh. Starting on it, pulling, you, you know, right? And if you've done this, you know where the stuff comes from. And you know the work that goes into it. And, and the thing is, is that it teaches you something. You know, okay, my, my wife, there's a, a fruit here in Hawaii. It's actually from Brazil, but it's, um, it's here. I, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. Cherimoya or something. Cher it's Cherimoya. A little purplish, dark, dark purple is it? Or dark blackish skin on the outside and then inside is whitish flesh like a miniature, miniature lychee almost, but really good. And sweet little buggers. And they grow against the, the stem of the tree, right up against it like clumps. Right off the stem. It looks so cool. The fruit just like clumps on, the right, just comes right out a little thing. And why, why, why? Someone blessed us with a few of them, and they said, this is just for you. And I was like, Whoa. And she's like, do you think we could grow one of these? And I'm like, yeah, give me some seed. So I ate one, I sucked all the pulp off, and I'm like, okay, give me, a, 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 I'm going to increase my odds. Because, you know, when you're a farmer, you know one seed, maybe. But put down five or six, I got a better chance, right? So I ate like five or six of these babies, and that was no trouble anyway. So I ate them, and I... And I put them in the in the in our we have a little basil container on the back lanai with the with the line that brings water to it every night, a couple minutes. So I'm like, I'm gonna improve my odds. I put them in there and wait till they sprout, and then when I see that they've sprouted, I'll transplant them, because I know that it came from a tree. And just like my my mango tree, which is now about the size of the tree behind Herb right there, that Herb's sitting under at the table. My mango tree is about that big. I grew it from a seed. And it's given me a lot of mangoes this year. And same for my cashew tree and my fig tree. All of these trees, you know, well, the fig tree was from a cutting. But, from, but a lot of the trees here, you can just grow from a seed. So I'm like, well, let's just see if we can grow them from a seed. Except that 
I've grown a few trees from seeds, and I know something that sometimes the kids of this generation don't know. How long is it going to take till I actually see some of those little fruits? You know, see, the difference between having a farmer's mentality is I understand I might be a decade away from actually seeing. You know, the, the mango tree that is producing now is in its eighth year, going into ninth. Last year, just a couple. The year before, one. You know, like at year seven, one mango. Year eight, chelate the bark at the bottom a little. Put a few little cuts in it so the tree thinks it's dying. Then all of a sudden it tries to fruit. Got a lot more fruit last year. This year. But that's, this is like eight years of waiting to get the mango, you know, to get the tree, to make the thing. Now, to me, I just look at it like, Eight years are going to pass anyway. I know that this might sound odd to some of your thinking, but in reality, you know, time's still going to march on. So my attitude from growing up on the farm is that, like, look, time's going to march on, so what am I going to do that I can improve it? You know, because I know that given 10 years, I could have, the, I could have all mature trees from seeds. I was talking to a younger generation. They're like, forget that, man. I'm going to go buy the trees already <laughs> with fruit on them to start. Stick them in the ground. I <laughs> said, you can do that too. Save some time. A little bit pricier, but, but it works. But it's because we want instant gratification. We don't want to wait for fruit. But let me assure you, if you do the right thing, you do what your calling is, you do what God chose you to do. And you just give it time. You might not know the fruit that comes because you're still watching the tree grow and it hasn't put out the buds yet. It hasn't put out the fruit. And so you might think nothing's really happening. But behind the scenes, God is at work causing growth and a growth that will be healthy just given the right amount of time until that thing becomes fruitful. You know, some of the things that I've had the privilege to serve the Lord doing, I didn't really, with, at the time, think this is going to amount to anything or will do anything. You know, we, we came here, by the way, July 4th coming up, just a couple weeks from now, my wife and I are going to celebrate 25 years of doing the church here in Hawaii. 25 years. So a quarter... I mean, that's a quarter of a century. That's 25 years. And, and I remember when I came here at t age 28. Now you can try to figure out how old I am, right? At age 28, I come here and there was no Christian radio. We began an eight-year fight with the FCC to put in Christian radio stations. I spent eight years, just like waiting eight years for a seed to grow, to fight just to get the first station open. That's how long it took. It was not easy. And I was glad that I was wired, you know, with a little bit of Sicilian in me because you need it for fighting. When you gotta, when you gotta fight the bureaucracy, you need to have a little bit of something in you that says, don't give up. Because they wire it to make you give up. They, they give you forms, they say, fill these forms out. You fill out the forms and then, yeah, more forms. And then you say, okay, is that, if there's any extra, give them to me now. I'll do them all. You got to turn in those ones first. <laughs> and you turn in those ones, and then they add another, and then another hurdle. And, another, and it's just like this endless hurdle after hurdle after hurdle. And it took eight, almost nine years till we opened the first repeater Christian radio station here. And then it would take the next four or so years to move them island to island to island, you know, because once we got one approval, then we went to the next, to the next, to the next. To the next. And during those years, it, it put me in contact with Mike Kessler. He's the fellow that does the CSN radio. He's a pastor over there in Idaho. By the way, he's the one I asked you to pray for because he'd like to move to Hawaii now. He would. He's older. He said it was 39 degrees when he got home. He, he was here just a couple weeks ago. 
not on our island. He was in Maui helping the, the repeater station there. Then he went over to Pearl Harbor for uh, Pastor Daryl uh, Skinner. He went over and did, um, when Daryl went down to Australia, he, he filled in for him. And so he said, yes, I'm, I, he goes, I was in Hawaii for two weeks. It was beautiful. I come home. It's it, t Boise. I, or I think it's Boise. No, it's a, somewhere Idaho. It's really cool wherever it is in Idaho. He says, it's um, Twin Falls, Idaho. Twin Falls. I'm sorry, Twin Falls, not Boise. Twin Falls. Where I, I've never been there, so I don't know. But he said it was 39 degrees. This is supposed to be their summer. He goes, he goes, I don't think I have another winter left in me. He's getting older. He's like, would you, would you um, pray I could come out there? And he's, do you need any help? I'm like, I could have help from Mike Kessler. Did you hear that? <laughs> if you're watching, Mike, you know, how cool would that be? So I'm like, sure, Mike, come, come and uh, visit and see if you, you know, I've not been to our island in all these years. I've been in touch with him. He hasn't been to our, so we, we need to invite him. I said, okay, this is going to work. Uh, but the fruit of this is that now I'm on the radio this morning. What Aaron just started the announcements with was I was on the radio right after him on CSN. And I never get to hear it except we were stuck at the gate today because the park worker was late. So I'm listening. I'm used to listening to Mike on my way down. I'm not used to hearing my own voice on the radio after. I'm like, ooh. Hey, I know that voice. Oh. And it's weird when you hear your own voice to your own, you know, it's like, that's not me. That's not how I sound, right? I'm sure it's not. And I, I, I go, is that how I sound, Mitchell? He's like, yep, that's you. <laughs> ay, 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 poor people. Except that God, God called me to do it. And all I have to do is, I, this part of scripture to me, this is more for, well, I, I mean, it's for all of us. We all have callings. For me, as a, a call to be a pastor, it's really good to have to teach this and then have to hear that. And go, well, you called me. And you put me through that fight for all those years to get these radio stations on the air. And now, little sliver of fruit, like the first fruit mango. I get to be put on the air once a week. Right after the guy who we helped start it all those years ago. I'm like, Lord, you're pretty cool. You know? But see, the fruit doesn't come overnight, does it? Because it, it's 25 years in just a couple weeks I've been here. This is a slow-growing tree. But I want to comfort you. This is where we don't have the, that, that kind of what I call long-range look. We're so busy trying to be immediate satisfaction you know just gratification we want it all now so quick in our culture that we've lost sight of being able to look down the road a little we've lost sight of the idea that some of the most precious things that that we're ever going to get to to enjoy in this life require a bit of time for all the pieces to come together and all the things to mature and all the all of it so that we're going to come to that day when we pick that mango and go, oh, that's a good mango. But it can take time. What about the fruit God wants to bring in your life? See, this is what I want to assure you. God is at work in all of us. He is. He, we are all works in progress. Anyone can give an amen to that? Amen? We're all works in progress. None of us are finished. But what we have to really do is be reassured. The Lord is doing His work. And what we studied, we're doing this on, on the midweek service in Philippians. He who began a good work in us is faithful to what? To complete it. Don't worry. God is faithful to complete what He is doing in you. You're His masterpiece. Just go with it. Don't just, just know God is at work. And it's a lifetime journey. Don't be getting this, this cultural influence over your Christianity where I need it now, immediate. 
We have a God that's talking our eternity, our eternal salvation, our, our whole long, I mean, he looks for our whole life. And he goes, I can do, I can work with that. And he's at work in you. And this is, if we would just like kind of expand our timeline or horizon a little bit, I think we would appreciate this life, the moment we're in right now, a little better. Because we got a really dissatisfied culture. Because they're always looking so, like such a sliver of it. You know what I mean? The, like, they, 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 just this moment. I need this right now, right here. And it makes you really, it's, it's not satisfying. It's kind of, there's something really satisfying of, of, about being able to stand up here and tell you, looking with hindsight at 25 years of work, here in the eyes to look back and think, yeah, when I was much younger, I was fighting like crazy with those guys. But now we've been on the air. The stations have been running. And it's kind of exciting because now some of the fruits are coming that just the first mangoes on the tree. Makes me go, what's God going to do next? So would you pray with me? Father in heaven, thank you so much for the privilege we have of looking at your word on a beach in Hawaii. And I pray, Lord, that not just for us here that got to partake, Lord, but the ones that will listen later, however it be, Lord, through the radio, the internet, that they would, their lives too would be enriched with your word. Help us, Lord. Help us to know your calling for us, your choosings for us. Help us to be able to grow into the place where you want to use us in your body. I pray, Lord, you would make it clear to each person here, each person listening, those things what you want to do in their lives. Lord, thank you. We pray for our dear brother, Greg Laurie, that you would just pour out your spirit, Lord, to such a, a powerful anointing, even more than he's ever experienced, Lord. And he has an anointing, Lord. We just ask you would continue to increase his anointing to preach your gospel today. We pray for all of the things going on and the preparations of the venue and, and just getting things prepared so they can get the gospel out, Lord. I pray that you would bind any of the, the evil that the enemy would throw at them that would try to put a monkey wrench in the, in the broadcasting and the rebroadcasting through the internet, Lord. Let all of those things work together seamlessly today for our brothers and sisters that are working so hard behind the scenes to make it happen so we could hear. Lord, and we do pray for many to come to know you today, along with all the prayers that have been lifted up to you, Lord, for salvation for all of those that are bringing their loved ones, hoping their ears will hear, Lord. May you give many, many ears to hear the call of your Spirit to come to you and to have everlasting life. We just ask that today. We could be involved in that right now, even as we pray. Lord, lay out those souls and draw them out to hear your gospel. We ask it in Jesus' name. And everyone that agree with me said, Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me listening to a closing song and send you off in the joy of the Lord? Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.